Okay. So we begin today with uh, uh, reviewing, uh, says mechanisms, but probably names will be uh, with that as well. So you tell me what you think you need help on or with. Anything that's going to be on the quiz tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Okay. So as we do go through these, how many of you do believe we are trying to help you be successful for moving on to the next step of your educational career? One, two. I'm not doing too bad then. All right. started recording. Yeah, let's try it down here. I already started recording on my computer. So uh, we're all here for first hour. Thank you. Yep, bye. Yeah, once, once if I leave the screen then it stops recording then we gotta start all over again okay so Okay, so first of all, when we look at that, all right, what are we dealing with right, right now? What is the name of that? Okay, so the organic family is an alcohol, and depending upon what we are reacting that with, there's two possibilities that we could do. One, we could oxidize it. Two, we could dehydrate that, okay? And do we possibly remember what, what happens if we dehydrate that? That would be sulfuric acid, and we're trying to help you utilize that set of reaction charts so we can be uh, 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 able to understand this material. So SA or H2SO4, same thing. Okay, and the next thing we need to uh, be aware of, those occur at two different temperatures. One of them is at 140, the other one is at 180. All right, so you go ahead and pick one, 140 or 180. Okay, now, and I'm guessing these are just approximate temperatures. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden it reaches 140 degrees. This is the only thing that's going to happen. Just like if this reaches 180 degrees, that, oh, if it's above 180, nothing's going to happen. That I really don't know for sure. But I would be led to believe that once you get to this temperature and higher, all the way up to 180 degrees, something very specific is going to happen because one of two things will take place. Either one, you dehydrate that, or two, you form an ether. And it's that chart that's going to help you. And I got to think about it myself. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to say uh, I got a 50-50 chance. At 140, it forms an ether. That was just a lucky guess. Yeah. Okay. And 
you're going to find out that even with lots of practice with many, many things, you're still not going to remember every little detail. Okay? So this is just ha having a little more familiarity with this. It probably would have been better if I would have started out with just ethanol instead of butanol because if we are going to form an ether, which, which this does, okay, according to that chart, which, which I would be led to believe is correct, what's going to happen on, oops, well, I can put another carbon there. Well, that looks confusing. It looks probably not not very concise. Okay, so all these bonds are still in there. That oxygen's still there, but since it's going to be an ether, what takes place? There will be four more carbons. And, and I don't know what the best way to look at this. I said that's uh, a, a snap deal as far as a percussion instrument. Maybe that's not any better. Um, what about if it's, a, if it's a trap? Okay, maybe that's a better way. If the trap is set, and then once you let it go, it, I, I, I don't know. What, whatever it is that helps you visualize that it forms two sides or a mirror. So when you said four more carbons, you're right. But does anything else go on this oxygen? No, it does not. Okay, so that's what happens at, 100, at around 140 degrees with that of a dehydration reagent. At this temperature range, alcohols will turn into ethers. Is that all alcohols though. Your flow chart would tell you otherwise that it is no. Okay. How many types of there are three classifications of alcohols. What's the only one that can do that? Primary because remember that's two sides of the trap coming up. If we make this a secondary alcohol we don't have that opportunity to form this mirror image of one another. Okay. So that's what happens with a dehydration reagent or sulfuric acid. Oh, I'm willing to bet that what that means, this would be one of them aspects where 95% would be of that nature and then There's some of that left. I'm not concerned about that. That's what that's referring to. Okay. The only one that we're really, really, really concerned about is if there's a major and a minor product. And that was from last chapter. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so... What happens then, while we got this up here, this totally changes the outcome if it's at 180 degrees then. It's still a dehydration reagent, but your product will be different. Okay. In other words, do you think this other side is going to be on here? And, and, and again, one of the things that I, I hope we can see and understand it. we're trying to approach this how it would be is if you were sitting in a college class if this was a college classroom okay but you would be expected to know all this already that's something you should have learned that last year in high school or you should know this or you're responsible for knowing this on your own but one of the things we want to approach this to where Okay, we're trying to gain a general understanding where you're not expected to know this but we're still trying to teach you all this content. Okay, so if we change that temperature range, what is your flow chart telling you? Right, you're totally changing the outcome. It no longer forms an ether, but rather what instead? You said something about a double bond, and we say that you are correct. 
but we've got an alkane right now. Oh, alkene. Okay. So we're getting closer. What else should we do? I we erase this one. Okay. So we got the one on the top. So we'll uh, take that one off. And then you said a double bond. That's right. Now, one of the reasons that that I think this happens, it's, it's all in the bonding angles and the, chemi the, the, the chemical properties of primary and secondary alcohols because, okay, is that if we have this instead, that's why we said the most important thing we want you to know is the difference between these primary and secondary alcohols, okay? That is very, very important. Okay. Are we worried about a temperature range with the sulfuric acid with secondary alcohols? Yes. You you can if you wanted to. It probably tells you that on the flow chart, and that's fine. Again, what I would suggest for those of you who are taking this next year that you do take this content with you, okay? Especially what you have in front of you. And we're hoping that would be a very useful tool for that in, in college, okay? You're not wrong if you write it down. I mean, it's, and I don't think anyone would criticize, criticize you for it. The only thing that I think would be kind of funny is if some people did this, and, and we know better than that. You know better, and, and we do, and I think we're, we're just fine with where we're at right now. Okay. Does, does this make a difference? Do we need a temperature range according to your chart in front of you? No. No. Nope. We're only concerned about the temperature range when it comes to primary alcohols. Again, I that's why we said, please make sure you understand the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols. Okay. This one is pretty much straight, more straightforward than this one. Yes? Oh, I didn't, oh, I'm just, okay. Just my imagination. Okay. Maybe it's something clicking on your feed or something. Okay. All right, with this one. We're going to so form something very similar like we did up here, but it's not on the end anymore. Okay. We're still going to have all four carbons. Okay. But there again, remember, what type of reagent is, what do we call sulfuric acid? What is it removing? Because you had already alluded to it because you asked correctly, you said, do we need to add this on the end, H2O? You, you don't have to, but what we're saying is, what are you removing from that? That's half of it. We said this is all about the what these uh, last couple weeks and into next semester. You're removing the alcohol, okay? Just like what we did over there, you removed the alcohol. But that wasn't all that got removed, was it? Because notice that's not here anymore. I guess I should probably put him down there. <clears throat> because what else got removed from here on this side? Because this is gone. Well, that got added to it. But see, this is gone now. What else is gone over here? That's empty space up there. You know it, you just don't know you know it. Right. So this hydrogen is gone. Remember we said it's all about the water. So now we removed H2O over here. H and H2O. So... This is a dehydration reagent, but with primary alcohols, 
it can do one of two things. Secondary alcohols, we're not concerned about the temperature range. It dehydrates it, which means something very similar what happened up here. When you dehydrate, something gets removed. Right, so, and this is where we say left or right. Okay, so that means that this OH is gone, and then you had said left. Okay, so when we do that, we said left, what do you suppose you're going to put in between these two carbons? Like we did up there, double bond. Now you get to say top or bottom. Okay, to place it there or remove it. Okay, so what we're illustrating, that is gone, this is gone. So it's all about the water. Dehydration means you are removing water. It has it on there too? Yeah. Oh, it does? Okay, it doesn't matter. You're always going to get that product. Yes, that is correct. <clears throat> okay, then can we close the door on dehydration? Okay, what other types of reactions take place with a trick question? Do we need to work through dehydration with a tertiary alcohol? You, when you say no, you are correct. Why are you correct? Because you can't dehydrate it. You also can't do what with tertiary alcohols? I don't think you can oxidize them. That's right. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and keep both of these up here, four carbon compounds. So you said oxidize, and you said that's correct. Can you give me an oxidizing agent? Okay, that's one of them, KMNO4. Okay, those are your two. And they have the same effect. Doesn't matter whether you flip flop one from the other. Those are very powerful uh, oxidizing agents. Okay. Your neck is going to be very, very sore before the end of the hour. All right. Okay. When we're staring down at our computer screen like this, I just thought, well, just trying to make sure we don't have any, any. Uh, Cervical vertebrae issues, because we know where your cervical vertebrae are, right? Yeah, they're in your neck. Okay. So with this, do these follow the same paths as far as oxidizing? No more similar than what uh, uh, dehydration really does, especially at uh, the temperature ranges. These Go two totally different directions. Because one of the things you'd want to be looking for, primary alcohol with an oxidizing agent, is there one or two stages for that? Get a 50-50 chance. There are two stages. Okay? So follow where this goes okay we're no longer dehydrating this is a little I would say this is a little more complex than what dehydration is okay so when you say there's two steps which there are okay for primary alcohols with an oxidizing agent what is the end result of step one all the carbons are still here. Okay, so this hydrogen has left. 
We've got a double bonded oxygen. We're almost done with that compound. Well, could you repeat, what about KMNO4? Well, yeah, it's, on, oh, not down here. There's something we got to add to the compound yet because what forms in stage one? Tim's assistant. Yeah, aldehydes. So how do we, we've got our carbonyl carbon, carbon with a double bond oxygen. How do we make that an aldehyde now? Oh, you're going to hit yourself and say, God, I knew that. Right. Yeah. I'm just being mean. Yeah, that bond is still there. Okay. It is. That's the end of stage one or step one. And what happens is we're not going to throw something like uh, maybe like aluminum, like copper sulfate, I think, is, a, is an oxidizing agent, is nowhere near as potent as this. We're not going to throw something on there that's going to say this is going to stop at stage one, gazuntite, okay? These, as we read in the book, it says that these oxidizing agents are too powerful to stop at the end of stage one. This aldehyde will still react with an oxidizing agent. And maybe that's what you were getting at when you said plus KMNO4. I never thought of it that way. So, yes, you are right. Okay? So, KMNO4. Okay? Then... What happens after our aldehyde stage? It's going to form what now? That double bonded oxygen is still there. And then you correctly said, um, in, in the context, you're right. An al we would say an OH, an alcohol, but that is not the organic family. Otherwise, we might interpret that being an alcohol. This is no longer an aldehyde, but rather an organic something. Again, it's one of the things you, you know it, you just don't know you know it. It's an organic acid. Yes. Okay. Now, one of the things that could happen is on any evaluation, we could write something like what happens when pentanal reacts with K2Cr2O7. What we're saying by that is we're already halfway through the stage. We're not starting with alcohol, we're starting with an aldehyde. So if we're saying what happens if pentanal reacts with KMNO4. Well, same thing. Still going to form an acid. You're just not starting with the same compound. You're not starting with an alcohol. You're starting with an aldehyde instead. You can start halfway through the process, is what I'm saying. So there's only one stage left where now I'm just using this as an example. You're just forming propanoic acid. Because we don't want you hung up on saying, oh, well, we've got this oxidizing agent, okay, but I don't know where to start because I don't see where we start with aldehydes. But here we're starting halfway through the process instead. That's something we could just throw at you just to try to be tricky and just see maybe who's paying attention or who can hit their free throws, for instance, or who wants to go after the loose ball. And, and sometimes I think that's part of um, why you ladies were so successful in volleyball is because you just wanted it more than anybody else. It's really no different with academics, just who wants it more than, who wants to work harder for it more than anybody else. Okay. 
primary alcohols, two stages when they're oxidized. Okay? All right. Primary, or excuse me, secondary alcohols now. Okay? What happens when they oxidize? We still form a carbonyl carbon, like what you had said. Okay. We're, we're going to clean it up here in just a moment. You said double bond oxygen. That's correct. There's no place for any oxygens other than here. Okay. So like I said, we need to clean it up. We just need to erase one little thing. Something along the top, you're right. Yep, hydrogen, not the carbon. Yep. So now we're not forming aldehydes anymore. We're forming what instead? See, you know this content. You just don't know you know it. No? We're just uh, making sure we understand it, and we're doing fine. All right. Probably the last thing. Okay. And this is a review. So that's why we're saving it till the end. Okay. You want water or a hydrogen halide? Okay. There's our hydrogen. What's our halogen? Why do we always want to use chlorine? Because we're comfortable with that? Because, I mean, that's fine. Okay. Hydrogen chloride, hydrogen halide. Okay. And as a review, we don't need a catalyst here because that bond is so unstable. Okay? So, a couple things that you had to ask yourself. One, what type of compound is that? Yeah, I get it's an alkene, but what did we spend time on saying? What type of compound is this? Is it the symmetrical type or the asymmetrical type? It looks like it's asymmetrical, but that's not the answer. It's symmetrical. The only way that this could be asymmetrical is if double bond is after the first carbon. So this is the symmetrical type, okay? But what type of reagent do we have, symmetrical or asymmetrical? It's asymmetrical. The only type of symmetrical reagents we have is this or this because they would look the same on both sides. Okay? So, you know, and I'm willing to bet if you page backwards in your notebook, you probably see this very same reaction because we probably had done it before. A and that's fine. But according to this, okay, we're not going to have a major and a minor product, but we do get two of them, okay? Because, we'll do this to try to help us out. Put the hydrogen and chlorine. And this is how we had done it before, too. We're kind of running out of time, okay? So, we still have all five carbons. Okay, so it has to form around this double bond. We could put something here and something here, but on that side. So, what do we want to put here? Hydrogen or chlorine? Okay, so the chlorine went here. So then the hydrogen had to go up top here, which we, which we already have. I get that. 
but we're just writing it in there. Because now we would want to also write plus, because we had picked the chlorine going here. Okay? The chlorine can also go on the third one, and the hydrogen can go there. So what that means is in equal amounts, you form two chloropropane, no, two chloropentane, and also three chloropentane. That's the only difference. It's a lot to remember. Okay. Do we need to go through the asymmetrical compound up top here? Chop him off and start with butene instead of 2-pentene. We can. Now, if this was Cl up here, okay, well then chlorine's occupying both spots. You're only going to get one product, okay? All right, so the request was made, okay? So now we have the asymmetrical compound, the asymmetrical reagent, okay? So if we do this, 50-50 shot, is that the major or the minor product? It is the minor product, okay? Okay, so we had the chlorine on the end. Now we're going to put the chlorine up here, and we'll put the hydrogen down there. And if you can't quite remember what, how the difference is, if it goes on the end, it's, it's the mine. I don't know. Markovnikov's rule had a scientific definition for it, but yeah, the hydrogen's looking for the one that already has the most. So it's looking for this. Because that's got two hydrogens, that's got one. So that means the chlorine then going to bond on here, and that's what makes that the major product. Okay, we're running on quite a bit of time. We threw a lot of content in there, and we could have spent more. Is there anything else? Other than just naming them, I think the naming is much, much easier than the reactions. Okay, otherwise, if not, we'll catch up to you on Monday, where we'll start reviewing for the uh, semester and hopefully because a lot of these we continue to review even though it's a chat it was a chapter from the previous chapter but they still intermesh with one another all right that's all we got for today catch up to you next time